And now, as promised, the one thing that can really help you be a successful backyard gardener, if you haven't figured it out by now, is using... What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. It is Wednesday, March 8th here in South Georgia. Another beautiful spring day. It's cooled off a little bit from yesterday. It's supposed to have a little cool spell and then warm back up again. So yesterday I made a little trip and restocked on fertilizer. So on today's video, we need to catch up on a little fertilization, especially with some of the things that we planted recently. In the process, we're gonna check on our in-ground tater plot, see how that's doing. And I'm gonna tell you the one thing you can do that will almost guarantee success in your backyard garden. So yesterday I made a little trip to the big city of Cairo, Georgia to Graco Fertilizer and restocked on this good stuff right here. It's Nature Safe 855 Fertilizer. So I went ahead and stocked up while I was over there and this is how we store it, just in one of these rubber trash cans here. Of course, we put a lid on it. We don't want any moisture getting in there. But this stuff doesn't really volatize in the air and stores for a long time. Never had any go bad on me. So I went ahead and filled up my dog's bucket there. That should be more than enough for what we need to do today. Now I'm not paid by Nature Safe or Graco Fertilizer where we got this stuff, but let me tell you a couple reasons why I really like it. So number one, it's pretty safe to use. If the kids are out here helping me in the garden and they want to touch it with their hands or whatever, not going to hurt them one bit. Whereas maybe some commercial fertilizers, I might be worried about them touching this with their hands and touching their mouth or something like that. I probably shouldn't share this, but one time I accidentally fed my chickens some of this instead of chicken food because it looks a lot like the same stuff. And I've got the chicken food trash can right beside this trash can. Thankfully, it didn't kill my chickens. I wouldn't recommend feeding this to your chickens, but if you accidentally do, it won't hurt them. Now the second reason I really like it is because it's hard to overdo it with this stuff. And if you do somehow overdo it, you're not really going to hurt anything. So whereas with some synthetic fertilizers, you put too much, you can burn the plants. If you get it on the plants, you can burn the plants. With this stuff, we get it on the plants, not going to hurt anything. We accidentally add too much, not going to hurt anything. And that goes back to the whole kids in the garden thing. If one of my sons accidentally dumps a whole pitcher of this, in one spot i've just spread it out not going to hurt anything yeah there'll be a lot more nutrients in that spot than there should be but it's not going to harm our plants now the third reason why i really like this stuff is because of how it feeds our plants so this stuff has a little bit of ammonia based nitrogen in it which is the form of nitrogen that will give plants a quick pop so this will give our plants a little bit of a quick pop there but the rest of the nutrients in it are more of a slow release form so we kind of get the best of both worlds here we get some immediate action and then some nice slow release over the entire growth cycle so now that we've restocked on this stuff, let's put it to good use and feed some of these plants in our garden. So we'll start out here in this tater bed where we can almost go ahead and heal this little double row right here. Need to wait on a few of those plants to get a little bit taller, but it won't be long before we can start backfilling this soil. Now, ideally, we would have put some of this down in the planting furrow when we planted these taters, but we didn't have any at the moment. And that's kind of the case with a lot of this stuff we're gonna fertilize out here in the raised bed garden today. So now that we have some, we'll do it a little differently than we would have done it initially, but kind of the same concept. So I'm just gonna take some of this and kind of sprinkle it between these tater rows here. Like I told you with this stuff, no worries about touching the leaves with it. It's not really gonna burn anything. Just going to get some down the center of the row here. Probably half a scoop or so in this raised bed. And then we'll come over here to this side where some of these taters are just now starting to pop. We can't see all the plants, but I know where they are. I know there's a row right here and there's a row right there. So I'm just going to sprinkle this right down the center of this trench here. All right, that should be good for that bed. Let's move on to the next one. Then we'll hit this tater bed right here. Not all these have popped yet, but the majority of them have. They're just not quite as tall as some of those in that other bed. Then we'll do these fingerling taters over here and pluck out some of this pigweed. That's how you know it's spring when you see pigweed popping. Get a few of those out of there. And now we'll sprinkle our fertilizer down the middle. 
Now next on the list would be these little squash babies that we planted just a few days ago. Planted two seeds here, basically two seeds on each corner. All of them came up. Now I'm just going to keep one of these plants here in each corner. Not going to make the decision on which one to pull quite yet. I'll let them get a little bit larger and then we'll pluck one of these out of here because we don't need eight squash plants in this bed. Four should be a plenty. Now with the taters that we just did, that fertilizer will get covered up when we heal those taters pretty soon. Here, we're not going to be doing any healing on the squash, so I do want to kind of bury this fertilizer a little bit. So I'm going to make me a little trench right here. Kind of the width of both of those plants there. Even though we're only going to keep one of those plants, squash roots can get pretty big. So if we put fertilizer along this entire band right here, it'll feed whatever plant we leave there. And just going to sprinkle some of that the soil there. And then we'll cover it back up. We'll do the same thing that we did right there to the other three corners. Now the next thing on our list would be this head lettuce here, which looks okay right now, but this stuff's not growing near as fast as it should be growing. I've grown enough lettuce to know that this stuff isn't as far along as it should be, and that has a lot to do with the fact we didn't put any pre-plant fertilizer down here. So we're gonna speed it up a little bit because we wanna get this stuff full size before it gets too hot and it starts bolting on us. So with this, Kind of hard to make a trench and cover it so we're going to kind of just scratch it in i'm going to put a little bit on this side of that row and then we'll put a little bit down through here just kind of fill in these open spaces here between the rows and this should make these lettuce plants pop and grow out a lot faster all right, so we got our fertilizer down there. I didn't put any there, there, or there because that's where our drip tape is buried and we don't need to be scratching on top of that drip tape. But we can scratch over here a little bit. Just kind of scratch it into the soil. It'll all dissolve once it gets some water, some rain on it here in the next few days. We'll just scratch it in the best we can there between those double rows. Take care of some of those weeds along the way while we're doing it. And then the last thing out here in the raised garden we need to feed would be these cucumbers, which we planted just a few days ago. They're not coming up yet, but they should be popping any day now. We can't see where the sprouts are, but I know I planted them right in the middle of these two pieces of drip tubing here. So if I make a little trench right here, kind of right inside this piece of drip tubing, I know I won't be disturbing any of the seeds there and should be just fine so now we'll get some of this sprinkled down in that little furrow we made since we planted those cucumbers so close we'll just put it all along this furrow here if you had just a few cucumber plants you might want to just sprinkle some beside each plant that should be pretty good right there just going to cover it up a little bit we can feed that soil and feed those plants once they germinate. Now in the raised beds, I don't really have a good baseline as far as how much fertilizer to use per plant, per row feed, or per square foot of bed. When someone asks me how much I use, I just say enough. I used enough to do what I was needing to do to feed those plants properly. Now in the in-ground garden, my rule of thumb is one of these half gallon pitchers per 30 foot row. So we're out here at the tater plot now. Let's take a look at what's going on. So in this 30 by 35 plot, we've got three rows of taters over there, which we'll get to in a minute. But over here, we've got lots of weeds, lots of little pig weeds popping up there. Now I need to get this cleaned up because we're gonna have tomato transplants ready in the greenhouse in just a couple weeks. But I wanted to give some of this pig weed time to germinate. Now I don't want it to get big enough to go to seed, but I kind of wanted to just let it all pop and I can come in here with a wheel hoe and kill it off, kind of knock down my weed seed bank before we plant our tomatoes. And then over here is where we have our in-ground taters planted. So we've got a row of Baltic Rose, a row of Huckleberry Gold, a row of Prairie Blush. Now these were planted a week or two after those raised bed taters, so we don't have full rows popping yet, but we are seeing quite a few little sprouts out here. Now one thing that's interesting to note is how some of these taters are popping out of the ground. We're seeing this with a few of the varieties in our raised bed garden and with this Baltic Rose variety out here in the in-ground garden. 
So normally when taters sprout, you'll just see the leaf right there popping through the soil and kind of laying flat on the soil, and it'll be kind of a bushy little plant that pops up there. But for some reason, with some of these varieties, we're getting these long, tall sprouts here, and then the leaves are forming on top of them. I have no idea why this is happening. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but it is pretty interesting because I haven't seen this before. I don't know if it has anything to do with that green sprouting process we did. I don't think it's that because it's not doing it with all the varieties, just a few of them. So this is more what I'm used to seeing. This is a little huckleberry gold tater plant. You can see how it's bushed out nicely there. Not really tall and skinny like those other sprouts are. So let me know in the comments below if you've ever seen that with your tater sprouting. I know I haven't. I think it's gonna be okay. It's just something unusual I've noticed this year. Now there's also some considerable differences in the fullness of the rows so far. So some varieties are just a little quicker to sprout than others. Baltic Rose looks really good, almost a full row on those. The Prairie Blush is probably behind the Baltic Rose a little bit. Probably can't see unless we got in real, real close, but we got a decent amount of plants popping through there. Some of them are just really, really tiny. And then the Huckleberry Gold here is later to the party i noticed this last year with this variety came up well made some really really good tasting taters just takes a little while for them to pop out the ground so much like the squash cucumbers and taters in the raised bed garden we didn't have any fertilizer when we planted those so we had to come back later and kind of side dress them that's what we need to do with these in-ground taters here today so i'm going to do one of these scoops per 30 foot row We've got these little mini furrows on each side of the row that were created when we planted the taters and covered up our seed taters. We could put our fertilizer on this side of the row. We could put our fertilizer on that side of the row. Heck, you could even put it on both sides if you were feeling really ambitious. But one scoop on either side should be good enough for right now. Once we put it down here, I'll take my little garden rake and just lightly cover it up like that. Now it's hard to tell there, but we got our fertilizer down, got it covered up a little bit with a rake. And doing all that today, we still got half a dog's bucket worth of fertilizer left. So we'll go dump that back in the trash can, use it another day. And now as promised, the one thing that can really help you be a successful backyard gardener, if you haven't figured it out by now, is using a pre-plant fertilizer or a soon after planting fertilizer like we did today. Now there are some folks that will lead you to believe that they've got this perfect garden soil that doesn't require any additional nutrient input. It's just all this one ecosystem working together that feeds their plants. They don't ever have to fertilize. That may be attainable in some situations. I don't think that's possible in our sandy soils here or I have yet to find it to be possible. So the mistake a lot of people make, those of us that don't have perfect soils, right? Is they plant some stuff starts growing okay and then it doesn't look so good or doesn't look as green as it's supposed to be and they're reaching around what do i need to do how do i rescue these plants how do i give them what they need when in actuality the problem could have been solved by just using a pre-plant fertilizer so with the exception of okri and field peas aka cow peas we use a pre-plant fertilizer on every single thing we grow and we grow a wide variety of things out here amongst all our garden plots so i would highly recommend every time you plant something put a little pre-plant fertilizer down at planting or shortly after planting that will go a long way to you having a successful grow out having some bountiful harvest you want to use something that is somewhat balanced the n p and k numbers don't have to be exactly the same but you want them kind of close to one another for your pre-plant fertilizer and for some veggies especially those with really short maturity dates like that lettuce over there for example the pre-plant fertilizer may be all it ever needs i don't ever really fertilize lettuce while it's growing usually i just give it the pre-plant and that's enough to grow out some nice heads of lettuce now there are other vegetables corn onions cabbage for example that tend to be heavy feeders and are probably going to need some supplemental fertilizer as they grow but a lot of things just a little pre-plant fertilizer is all you need so try to be proactive instead of being reactive 
give your plants some pre-plant fertilizer i promise you they'll use it and i promise you you'll get a better harvest as a result don't wait until your plants look pitiful or look like they need something and then you're scrambling to try to save them give them some of this in the beginning and i promise you you'll be a lot more successful in your backyard garden so I hope you enjoyed the video today. Good to get caught up on feeding some of our plants there. And let me know in the comments below, if you use a pre-plant fertilizer, what do you use? And if you don't use a pre-plant fertilizer and think all that stuff I just said is hogwash, let me know about that as well. And as always, you can find links in the description below to all our affiliate partners. Got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got our fig trees for sale, got a few seeds for sale, our garden blog recipes, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh. Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.